Okay, so this is uh, a manipulator, which I'm gonna draw next. It's going to be a two-dimensional manipulator. It's in the 2D plane. So there are two, uh, two links uh, of length L1 and L2. Let's call this L2, let's call this L1. And now let's start assigning frames. X0, Y0, O0. So this is my uh, world frame. When I say world frame, it means that it's not going to move, it's not going to change, it's going to be fixed. It's that global origin. So for each, uh, so the way you describe a manipulator is by angles. So there are, in this case, there are two angles, theta one and theta two. So we'll draw frames for both those angles. So there'll be two more frames. One of them will be uh, like so. So this is along link one, x one, y one. And you can see as, the manipulator rotates. So let's call this angle theta one. As theta one changes, X one is going to rotate. As so uh, Y one will also rotate. We'll always maintain the 90 degrees between them, but it will keep rotating. So it's a moving frame compared to X zero, Y zero, which is fixed, not going to move. Similarly, we can draw a frame for the other link. So let's call this x2, y2. And then uh, I, what I forgot is I should also put o1 and o2 indicating the origins of those frames. So again, as you see that when this link two will rotate, uh, x2 will also rotate. The way we describe angle two will be, it's the angle made by the extension of x1. So x1, I just extended it and I can draw this angle as, I'll call this angle as theta two. Okay, so let's call this O, let's call this P, and let's call this Q. This is what is known as my end effector. Okay. And the, to the end effector, you could attach maybe a manipulator or a gripper. And if you want that manipulator to either maybe do pick and place, so if you need it, you need to locate that Q uh, perfectly, otherwise you cannot do that. Uh, you could also, some if you want a robot to draw, then you need to put a pen at Q and then you know you can make it draw and so on. So we are interested in the motion of Q most times. And we want to be able to first describe how Q changes as theta one and theta two changes, given that L1 and L2, which are the lengths are fixed. That's called the forward, kin forward kinematics problem. So forward forward kinematics is Given theta one, theta two, compute, and let's give it a name. Let's call this point as X and Y end. So we compute X and Y end. And then there's this problem, which we'll also talk about a little bit later, which is called the inverse kinematics problem which is given X and Y and compute theta one and theta two. Now this problem is actually the easier problem. 
this is often the harder problem. It's easy because once you specify theta one and theta two, uh, you see the calculations is fairly straightforward. In this case, you really don't need frames. You do it with frames, but you can also use trigonometry to figure out how, what's the location of point Q given those angles. Uh, the other reverse problem, which is given X and Y and you need to find theta one, theta two is harder because it can have one solution. It can have multiple solutions or it can have no solution. So example where it will have once, well, uh, in this case, you'll have actually two solutions. So if you want to come to this point and you could do it this way, you could also do it this way. And so you have two uh, configurations to give the same end effective position. A case where it is, there's no solution is when my hand only can reach up to here, but if you want to go further beyond that, you cannot reach that because it's beyond your reachable space, that's no solution. Uh, one solution happens when you have bounds. So let's say that you allow this solution, but don't allow the other solution because of some joint limits. So in that case, you will see there will be will be one solution. Anyway, so we'll get to the inverse kinematics. For now, let's do forward kinematics. Uh, what I'll do is, and I said you could figure out Q by just doing trigonometry here, right? So Q x n, for example, will be l one cosine theta one plus l two cosine theta one plus theta two because uh, the angle here is theta one. So you can do that. But let, trust me, if you use frames, then it will be much easier to do this if you have more complicated geometry. So we'll use frames to do this. Okay, so what I said was you need to you will be using the homogeneous transformation, which is this. Okay, so we'll, we'll do it one at a time. Uh, let's first figure out, so O is going to remain the same. It's going to be zero comma zero. We need to figure out the position of point P. Okay, once we figure out point P, we'll then go to Q one at a time. So position of point P, and we're always interested in location about frame zero because that's the ground frame. Right? Because when you want to locate something, it's fixed to the ground. It's normally not moving. If it's moving, then you'd have to describe it slightly differently. So we want to find the compute the position of P0. That will be H10 P0. This is just using H P1. That is just using the formula for the definition of H. Okay, so Let's write that down. That's going to be R. R is going to be cosine theta one minus sine theta one, sine theta two, sorry, sine theta one, cosine theta one. Uh, and then there'll be zeros and there'll be a one. Now we need to find, compute the location of P so this is what's P. The definition of P is position of P, P in frame one. And it's in frame one because of this one. So we need to go here and check out for the location of P in frame one. And frame one is this. So X is along the, is along the link L1 and Y1 is perpendicular to it. So the location of P in frame one is going to be L1 because along the x-axis and zero along the y-axis. Right? This is in frame one. So I just need to put that down. Sorry, okay. this should be here. L1, zero. Okay, and so what goes here is this thing, uh, which is, so this is P1, this should be O10. Uh, so this is the position of this point, which is zero, zero. Okay, so if you do the math, what you get is,
P zero is L one cosine theta one, L one sine theta one one, which is not a surprise because you know from trigonometry that's true. Okay, so we got position of P. Let's move on, find the position of Q because that will give us the position the end effect. So location of Q, we'll again write the formula. Q, uh, let's do it one time. Q1 is H, Q1, Q2. Okay, so what it's doing is going one frame at a time. I'm trying to find the relation between frame two and frame one. So this is relating this frame X2 with X1. And then I can apply that formula again. So Q zero is H one zero Q one. And so I just need to sub one value in the other to get Q zero is H one zero H two one Q two. Okay, so Q zero is going to be H one zero something you already computed, it's right here. So I'll write that down. Zero, zero. Okay, so for H21, this is going to be, uh, instead of theta one, I need to write in terms of theta two. So the same formula. Okay, then I need to compute, uh, just like O10, I need to compute what is O21, that'll go here. And then I need Q2, which is the position of Q in frame two. So let's set, write the Q2 first, it's easier. So go here, figure out the position of Q in frame two. Frame two is this. So the position of point two is going to be L2, uh, zero because that's along the x2 axis, it's along the x axis in frame two. So that's L2 zero of one. This is Q2. Okay, now I need to find the position of two uh, of uh, O2 in frame one. So let's go there. So that's O2, and it should be in frame one, this frame. So the position of this in frame one is that you can see that it's actually along the x-axis. So it's conveniently, so O2 frame one. It's going to be along the x-axis. So L1, x1 axis, so L1 comma zero, right? So L1. And make it easier to understand this. Okay, so doing the math again will give me uh, the page. So Q2 will come out to be. L1 cosine theta one plus L2 cosine theta one plus theta two, L1 sine theta one plus L1 sine of theta one plus theta two, okay, which is actually equal to the X and Y and one. So clearly, if you're given theta one and theta two, and L one and L two, you can compute the position of the end effector, which is at two. And remember that we we want it in frame zero, because maybe we located the object in frame zero, which is the world frame. So once you have this, it's easy to program this in in uh, Python and then get it to 
uh, draw the manipulator. I'll show you some code which will plot this. Uh, this is using some of the primitives which we have used before. I think I've used line and then matrix multiplication. So let me just show you that code. Okay, uh, it comes out to quite a bit of code. Okay, so I'm going to run this first and then see the output. And then we can talk a little, a little bit of the code. So the manipulator for some random theta one and theta two. Uh, so I've, I've tried to comment it out, but hopefully that now that you know how to do animations and uh, plotting, you will understand this. Uh, I keep track of, I keep, so I could have done it with a function, which a homogeneous transformation function and then used it. But in this case, I just decided to hard code H, which is separately. So H01, H12, uh, H02, which is going to be a multiplication of H0 and H12. And then uh, origin, uh, position of point P in frame one, position of point P in frame zero, uh, global position of P, and then same thing with Q. And then in order to plot, all I do is, uh, I did not use line, line is one way to do it. I just connected the origin with point P to get the first link. And I connected point P with Q to get the second link. Uh, I gave it some line width and so on, but it can be done with line too. And then I chose some uh, random angle. I, I chose 0 0.5 for theta one, and then I chose a 90 degrees for theta two. So if you change that to let's say minus 0.3, uh, 